Hello and welcome back to Banner Page and our Iron Man challenge. Now, as you can see, we're up against some Sea Raiders here, and this is basically what I have been doing in my off-screen time. Because, of course, I don't really want to do anything too audacious in my off-screen time, because, well, I want, you, I want you to see that, obviously. I want you to see all of the wonderful excitement that can potentially happen. And, uh, well, personally, I haven't really been doing anything too exciting, just fighting sea raiders, take a bandit, and taking them down to the salt mine nearby to Dirim and just depositing them there. I did take a couple of prisoners and sell them on, however, and that actually has provided quite a lot of additional cash. So for those of you that are wanting some cash and you can't potentially, uh, you know, complete those extremely difficult tournaments, you, then you don't have to. You can, you can literally just do it a uh, standard way just fight bandits with a blunt weapon or with a whole bunch of manhunters or something like that and then you're going to be in a really really good position and saying good position eh, I'm not really in a good position right now I kind of I mean I'm I'm doing much better than I was in the previous episodes in terms of levels as well as in terms of money bear in mind however that the money of course is a very uh, a very fleeting thing because of course there's a lot that I want to do but the money is kind of keeping me away from most of my objectives which is unfortunate but of course I am still attempting to earn as much renown as possible as well renown is a very important resource too but maybe not even as important as money hmm maybe, maybe. it really just depends but anyway there you go we didn't uh, unfortunately knock that many people unconscious because this is actually the largest party of bandits that I have fought so far uh, because obviously I wanted to do something that was a little bit a little bit riskier because of course I'm recording this you know because in my off screen time I generally tend to fight bandits that are, are about mm, maybe 10 to 15 strong just literally units that I am easily able to defeat without any problems whatsoever. That's the kind of thing that I will usually fight off screen because I don't want to be in a situation where I'm going to literally end up uh, dying super badly or something like that. Oh yeah, and by the way, I actually have a number of additional companions as well. And uh, Artie Mena here is my newest one. And he is going to be using a crossbow and a one-handed weapon, as is the case. And there we go. So hopefully he will upgrade. There we are. It seems like he has upgraded, which is really nice. And if you want to, what you could do also is if you actually build a refuge or something like that, because I think you can actually do that in Banner Page as well. So if you build a refuge by going to take an action, I think you can do it. Build fortifications and wait here for some time. I think that might be the thing. Let's uh, actually just... Uh, yeah, yeah, you need tools. You need tools to be able to do that. Unfortunately, I don't have tools at the moment. But anyway, the point is, is that you can do that if you want, but uh, it's probably a better idea to wait until you have like a castle or something like that. But what I was going to suggest is basically just going into a marketplace or looting the thing or whatever the case may be, and basically just having, as you can see, I have 43 prisoners in the mine now, which is actually quite nice. But anyway, basically just having all of your companions be outfitted with blunt weapons and just fighting looters every single time. And if you do that, then you're gonna have basically insane, unlimited amounts of prisoners just flowing into your salt mine. And eventually you're going to have I don't know, a thousand dinars, two thousand dinars if you keep at it, you know, I, I've had to obviously make my way down there multiple times to try and see what I can do about uh, depositing those those prisoners down there. And I'm thinking that uh, once we get to about a thousand, maybe, maybe fifteen hundred or something like that, I think I might like to uh, start selling the prisoners instead because those guys really do sell for quite a lot and it would be quite cool. Now uh, that guy can actually teach you something. There's a ransom broker. Uh, coolly enough, there's actually a lot of ransom brokers in Banner Page. I seem to come across one quite often. And I think it's really, really nice to see that because sometimes in mods, there just aren't enough ransom brokers, but it's really nice that Banner Page tends to, uh, for some reason, always give me a ransom broker whenever I want it, which is great. 
But otherwise, let's just continue to level up Matteld here. She's obviously a new companion of ours as well. And uh, also something that I haven't done is level up. I literally have not leveled up. Uh, or, or should I say, I have not spent my stats uh, since the previous episode because I wanted to actually do that on screen. As you can see, I've actually leveled up three times because, of course, most of the time, if I'm up against a party of looters or very easy bandits like forest bandits or something like that, then I'm literally just going to go in there by myself and try and knock as many of them unconscious as possible before sending my troops in to finish up the remaining bit of their army. So this is the thing. I would like to get some more shield skill. I would love to get some more prisoner management skill, but uh, I don't think prisoner management at the moment is going to be a uh, priority personally. I think we're probably going to have to do something about our Strength a little bit here. We're going to go for another point in Iron Flesh, another point in Shield, and probably another point in Power Throw or something like that. Going to go for more points in Strength as well. So let's go for another point in Power Throw. Personally, I feel like I should be able to deal quite a bit of damage with my one-handed weapon as it is right now. But obviously it is... Ooh, there's 20. Come back here. Yeah, okay, so... A lot of people are having problems with a lot of people right now, but I am sending them off for right to rule at the moment. And uh, that's basically what I what I would like to do. So, uh, ah, yes, Artie Mena does not want to do that. Okay, so let's send off, send off Clethy instead then. Ah, okay. So then they're both not wanting to do that, which is unfortunate. Okay, well, whatever the case. Ah, hello. Oh, that's a lot of people. That is a lot. Okay, this is actually really, really nice. Look at that. 31. Now, in this episode, I'm very much hoping that what I will be able to do is either join as a vassal to a faction. It's highly unlikely that that's going to happen, by the way, because I just don't have enough in terms of uh, renown. I don't have enough renown to be able to do that. And by the way, I did turn off auto exposure, but apparently uh, I'm still getting the blinding snow. Not entirely sure what's going on with that. I do have HDR off as well. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know why that's happening. That has always happened to me in every mod that I've played that has this snow texture. I'm not entirely sure why that happens to me, but whatever the case, hopefully we'll be able to uh, win the day while being blinded. And uh, maybe, I can, uh, maybe I can level up my throne weapon proficiency a little bit, but these are Taker Bandits, so I do have to be a bit careful of their throne weapons as well. So let's actually tell my, tell my cavalry to charge in here. Try and do some damage. Just a... Oh, wow. Just a little bit. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, so this is generally what I would have happened to me when I'm actually off screen, but not not in this regard. You know, I might lose my horse, but I wouldn't be at, a, uh, at such a significant deficit in terms of my HP. So this is kind of... This is kind of new to me, but... Oh, well. I think we should be fine. Uh, take him down. Oh, no. I wanted to kill him so that we could actually take him prisoner. Oh, well, never mind. My guys are doing a fantastic job, as is the case. And uh, we can take those guys out as well. So most of these guys will be placed into my salt mine. And bear in mind that uh, the great thing, actually, about having the salt mine as an option is the ability to stockpile units and this is basically like an investment because what's going to happen is of course every single week you're going to be getting some kind of money from the salt mine but the other portion of it which is just an absolutely insanely cool thing is that you can take out units as far as i'm aware you can take out units and then you can sell those prisoners to a ransom broker nearby if you want to and it's basically like a Really nice cash injection, I suppose you could say. So I think that's really cool. Otherwise, we do have a couple of extra things here, but these things are not really going to be anything I will be using. We'll just take all of it to sell. And then, uh, yeah, look at this. We're just getting so many people leveling up right now as well, which is really good. But yeah, this is basically what I've been doing. This is, this is it. Just literally going fighting bandits. And I'm not fighting the big, big units either. I'm, I'm fighting pretty small, small bands of of enemies and uh, we're still getting a pretty decent amount of cash and I think what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go into the streets right now oh wait a minute I don't even need to do that I can just actually speak to the guildmaster from here okay so ah 
Okay, so I, st I still have a problem with the guy? Okay, I actually thought that uh, he wasn't having a problem with us. Where is he, by the way? Because I haven't seen him anywhere around. So where is that fellow? I need to hunt down this guy, 12 days. Yeah, I still need to do this. This is a, a quest that I gained in a previous episode, as far as I'm aware, and I just still have not done it, because I've literally just focused on, you know, doing all kinds of other stuff, like fighting bandits and things. And as you can see here, I actually have 60 renown. That is certainly not enough, in my opinion, to be able to make uh, make ourselves a vassal. I think we need to be like 100 or something, maybe maybe 150 renown for that. But whatever the case, I'm going to try and see if I can find this guy here. Where, where, which one is he again? Ah, uh, is it, uh, wait a minute, we can probably tell. Y River, Ch yes, there's this guy. This guy, okay, so where is he? That's the thing. Uh, he was in the field. Ah, oh, okay. Right. He was in the field and close to River Chegg. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't, I don't see him. Maybe he's coming back? Do th I mean, the report is current, apparently, so I have just seen him, apparently. Okay, well, that's... Kind of interesting. Uh, well, whatever the case, uh, maybe we should fight these guys. Oh, I'd like to fight them, but I still, I really want to get a Weavery and Dye Works up and running here, if at all possible. Ah, there he is. All right. So I did go into Rivercheg and I asked the guy in there because there was actually a lord in there, and I thought to myself, oh, okay, I might as well just go in there and ask. And uh, well. Here he is. Here he is. So do you have any tasks? Ah, they have established a hideout in this area. Oh, yes, I will certainly do it. No problem at all. Okay, so that means that I can head back to Rivercheck. I assume that the Sea Raider landing is in the same place as it technically always is, and uh, we will hopefully be able to destroy it, even though that will reduce the amount of spawns in this area of Sea Raiders and things, but there are enough Tega Bandit spawns and stuff to hopefully make it worth it. Oh, oh come on now. Where, where is it? Ah, there it is. All right, so we did manage to find it. Just had to go along the coast a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to need to be... Uh, oh, okay. I was going to say, I, I'm going to need to be a little bit careful, but I wanted to wait until uh, daytime, like pure daytime, for us to go in and fight in the hideout. But mm, apparently that is not how it is going to be. And so we are going to have to fight these Sea Raiders beforehand. And I also wanted to try and restore myself to full HP because obviously in the last fight we did take a bit of a battering. So hopefully that's not going to be the case this time. Otherwise it will probably result in my demise, which would not be good. So let's see if I can get a decent... Uh, let's, get our, let's get our cavalry over here. Let's try and do a, a couple of tactics. We don't really want to do too many tactics against such simple enemies considering we can usually win the day just literally by charging straight in but we do want to be a little bit careful about things so let's tell our infantry to charge in here and uh, then uh, our cavalry Wait, where are my infantry uh, they're actually they're actually engaging them so we can tell our cavalry to charge in now as well and hopefully I won't get murdered by some of these guys throwing weapons yeah they actually seem pretty deadly as well yes yes knock him unconscious uh, get him. Ah, oh, no, never mind. Yeah, that, that's that's kind of the, that's kind of what's been happening because obviously I don't have a very good riding skill, and I am basically riding the slowest horse that you can potentially get, maybe except a donkey. But yeah, Sumter horse, not the fastest thing ever, but it's done all right for me. You know, for a very very cheap price, it's pretty good. It's pretty good at what it does. I'm not going to take anything here. I'll, I'll probably just take the caravan guards, all things considered. But yeah, otherwise let's just upgrade. No one wants to take any of this stuff? Okay, I'm actually kind of surprised. The shield is actually better than what I was using, so we'll take it. And there we have it. Alright, so everyone has leveled up actually quite nicely. So let's go over to Alayan here. He's going to be our, well, sort of a heavy cavalry, heavy infantry option. Probably not going to make him into cavalry or anything like that, even though he does have three riding skill because as I said before, we're gonna go for like a full infantry kind of build for our army as well as our character. So we're gonna try and make them into absolute beasts of infantry, I suppose, will be the way that we'll do things. Bear in mind that Artie Mena is probably not gonna be staying with us because he does have a problem with Clethy, even though we might be able to find the companion that he actually does like, and then it will result in him being kind of happy or appeased 
in some way. So I'm going to level up his intelligence nevertheless, and we're just going to get him some Power Strike and Iron Flesh just to make sure that he can maybe handle himself a little bit better in a fight. And otherwise, let's level up our Swadian Man at Arms right there, Vagian Knight, Mercenary Heavy Horseman, and a variety of other things. And we do have eight Nord Huskars. I'm actually going to put them to the very top because I would like them to join me in the Sea Raider landing. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so Clethy, mm. Tell companion Artimena you have my support in this and he should hold his tongue. Yes, we will do that. And I will then say to Artimena whether he can... Okay, apparently none of them want to actually go off and... Uh... Yeah, this guy does. Okay, so Alain's just going to go off and do that then. Uh, yes, the drama, the drama, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it fascinating? Okay, so there we go. I think that should be enough. Let's go in and see if... Uh, okay, maybe not enough. Maybe not enough. I am still kind of injured, which is not great. What do I have with me right here? Bunduk, a Huskarl, Ferentis, a Huskarl, a Huskarl. Okay, that's that's, uh, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Not too bad, although the Huskarls are using their two-handed weapons against guys that no doubt we'll be using quite a few, as you can see, thrown weapons. So we're just going to tell these guys to come over in this direction here, and uh, we're just going to be very, very cautious about how we play this because it could very well be quite difficult or maybe not as I smack him across the head uh, okay maybe uh, are they gonna respawn here if we don't actually move away mm, they might they might not that's the thing uh, okay well I guess what I'll do uh, that's the thing. Usually what, what is going to happen in these bandit hideouts is that if you move away and you uh, give them some space, then they will respawn behind you over there, and then they'll start attacking with ranged weapons of some kind. But if you don't, then maybe they won't. It really depends. Sometimes it depends if you go into a bandit hideout and you have the forest map rather than the Sea Raider landing map, then uh, they might spawn really close by to you, but uh, usually that's not the case. So let's see if we can maybe do something here. My people are reacting quite nicely, I think. Uh, bear in mind that it actually does not matter if I knock these guys unconscious, because you're not going to be able to take prisoners from them, which is a bit unfortunate, especially... Wow, look at that damage! I'm wearing, uh, I'm wearing a Sea Raider helmet at the moment, and I was still able to take such insane damage from a head strike from a regular looter. I mean, that's... That's, pre that's, that's, that's pretty harsh, you know, that's pretty harsh. Not as harsh as the guys in the tournaments, though. That's at least, a, you know, a saving grace for me right now. Because if these guys were as hard as those, then I would never be able to complete this in a million years. But anyway, it seems like everyone is indeed perfectly fine. And... I think these guys are fine, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to the other side, just in case there are a couple of extra spawns. There might be... But uh, I'm pretty sure that my guys will be able to deal with anyone else. And nope, that is actually it. Okay, fantastic. That was a lot easier than I anticipated. Usually those things are kind of, mm, kind of a bit dicey, dependent on who you take in there. So that's why I wanted to take as many Nord Huskals in there as possible because they're just going to be so so good. And it's kind of weird how these are not price price based. Why why are they not sorted by price? Oh well, never mind. I guess I will just take the helmet. Ooh, they actually have some they actually have some cheese and stuff. Okay, so I should probably take the cheese uh, for food variety and things like that. And there we go. All right. Uh, I will let my people take some stuff. Oh, they, they threw out the javelins. I'm actually wondering why they threw out the javelins. Maybe they uh, picked up something else. Okay. Well, hopefully they did. Anyway, that was the Sea Raider landing. And we can now... Go back to Mariga, which is hopefully still going to be over here. And then we will be able to build a Weavery and Dye Works in Rivercheg finally. Ah, my party is exhausted. No. Ah, that's terrible. Okay, so I'm going to have to do something about that as well. Oh, it seems like he has moved on. So I don't know where he's gone, but I will be attempting to find him. All right, so I found him. And uh, that was with the thanks of a lord nearby that I asked. 
And he said that he was near Mason, and this is exactly where he is. So there you go. We now have a positive relation with Mariga. We advanced most of our people to the next level. 1,500 dinars and three renowned. Pretty nice. Let's see. Oh, he's actually wanting to hire some... Uh, hmm, he wants to hire some mercenaries, eh? That might actually be something that I might like to do, because that is going to result in a couple of vassal battles as well. Because if we can attack a vassal... And we have a primarily strong, decent combat strength force to use against them. Then we might very well be able to do something quite nice. And especially considering, are they at war against the Kurgits? I think they're at war against the Kurgits, which is going to be uh, a huge headache. But we'll see. I'm going to join them. Yes, your enemies are my enemies. Give me 600. Okay, so yeah, Kurgit Khanate is actually at war against them, which is... Ugh. It gives me it gives me shivers all over to think about uh, fighting the horse archers of the Kurgits, because they are uh, they're, they're probably my mortal enemy in uh, in native based mods because it's just really uh, they they are just too good you know their their horse archers are just really really good. All right, so now I can speak to the guildmaster. Do I have enough cash though? I actually don't know whether I have enough cash. Yes, I do. I think I might have enough cash. Anyway, let's just sell what I can here, because I actually have a full inventory, most of it at least, and I've uh, got to say I absolutely love the fact that all of these merchants have such an insane amount of cash as well, so and so nice to see that, and let's go into the guildmaster here and see what we can do, all right, so now we can do this, Weavery and Dye Works is going to give us a profit of 608, that's not actually that much if you think about it, what about the Iron Works, no the Iron Works is not that great either, oil press, yeah, I think that the Weavery and Dye Works is going to be the greatest thing. Most things actually do give you a profit, though, which is actually quite nice. So for those of us that don't really have that much money, so for example, you could spend 2500 and then with this, you'd be able to gain 162 per week, which is not great, got to say that. It's not great, but it is better than what it would normally be, because as far as I'm aware, Banner Page does tweak the economy somewhat. So you do have to take that into consideration. Did I check the wine press? Yes, I did. Okay, well, let's go for Weavery and Dye Works then. That will be 10,000. That's actually quite expensive, isn't it? That is quite expensive. I don't know whether I really want to do the tournament because I am pretty terrible with it. Uh, I mean, we know. We know that I'm pretty awful with it. So what about four teams with two members each? I think the uh, mod creator themselves actually did tell me what the best... Uh, best combination is, but I have completely forgotten, so I do apologize for that. But uh, otherwise, we're just going to randomize our equipment. We are in the Vegia territory. Four teams of two members each. Let's try this out and see how it goes. So, next round, and hello, Guardsman Ra Ramar, Ramar, and, oh wow, you're doing an absolute beastly job. This guy has no, this guy has no weapon. That guy has no weapon. Well, I'm happy with that. No problem at all there. And uh, that fellow is just standing in the corner. Okay, yeah, this is actually working out a lot better than just having the two teams. Because usually what's going to happen then is you will be murdered to like no one's business. Because, you you know, usually the, the enemy is going to have lords and things. And, uh, oh, there's two Guardsman Ramars. Oh, that guy must be livid that someone's copying his name. Terrible. Okay. Well, whatever the case, I think this is working a little bit better for us. And, wow, that guy still doesn't... <laughs> I assume he wants to use something that is not allowed in uh, in this tournament, which is quite funny. So maybe I can actually even beat him with this. Beat him to death with a stick? Yeah, uh, it's, not, it's not going too well for him. Oh, oh, okay, I actually did eliminate someone, but unfortunately, now I have a two-handed. Let's do this. Oh, you're dead. You're dead. That is what you get. Unfortunately, I now have to deal damage against two enemies. Okay, here we go. Yes, take this. Ah. Oh, that was our companion. Yes, that's absolutely fine. I'm perfectly happy with this. Yes, nice. 
Okay. Oh, I should have gone through with that swing. That would have been nice. Ah, uh, th wow, that was Clethy. Are you serious right now? That was actually Clethy. What a crazy, crazy companion she is. Okay. I did not anticipate her being so incredibly good. I would have easily lost 100% against an enemy lord or something like that. Absolutely. Anyway, we are rank one of 32 participants. I can't believe it. All right, let's see if I can do something here. Good work, Ramar. I can't, I can't ride this. So, uh, good work, fellow, uh, fellow person on my team. Please don't die. I need your assistance. <laughs> uh, kill this guy. Kill, kill him. Kill, kill that one instead. Ah, yes, kill that one too. Ah, I can just direct him. That's basically all I can do right now. Wow, that was some damage. Okay, yeah, I took some massive damage from behind right there. The green team definitely had my number. Wow. Okay, we're still rank one, which is actually kind of surprising. I actually wonder whether we'll be able to achieve some kind of victory here. It would be kind of nice. Okay, come on. Where, where are you running off to? Come on, take him down. Yes, there we go. Okay, this guy is insane with his two-handed axe. Does so much damage. So, so much damage. Don't die now. Yeah. Oh, never mind. He's just such an utter beast. Okay, come on, attack me, sir. Oh, never mind. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, that guy absolutely murdered everything. I am rank two now because my 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 friend, my uh, well, my future enemy, shall we say, is uh, just murdering everyone in sight and uh, actually doing a very good job at it. Oh, look at that. I actually did quite a bit of damage there, but unfortunately was not able to do anything. Okay. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, I might have it. Yes, there we go. Aha. Fantastic. Oh, dear. This is a lance. Uh, oh, that's Clethy, I believe. Or one of my companions at the very least. Oh, there's two, two from the blue team still remaining. This is not good. This is not good at all. Okay, yes, yes. Use it using the horse. Using the horse as a way to block. Yes. This guy's going to murder me, isn't he? Ah, uh, no. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Ah, he got me. He got me. That's Ramar. Look at him. Look at him. He's doing so much damage. Yeah, unfortunate. Unfortunate. Okay, so I am now rank four, which means that I am out of the running for, for for top three, which is not great. So I need to get some kills here, maybe if I can. Okay, come on. Give me this. Oh, and then I got murdered. Yeah, I thought I was actually aiming for the other guy, but he came at me so incredibly quickly that I was just like, okay, yeah, just do that 65 damage. Just do that. Okay, well, hopefully our our fellow is going to win. Actually, it doesn't really matter because I'm dead. So it will just be a case of... Wow, he's actually still winning. Look at that. What, what team was I on? I was on the red team. Where is he? Oh, he's all the way over there. I think he's dead now. Yes, but now it's a one versus one against these guys. I, yeah, I find, I find the tournaments with more teams to be actually a lot more fun because then I don't have to uh, really have so much pressure on me to actually perform relatively well. But here's the thing. Look at this. Matild. Matild is number two. I really wish because she was a part of my army that I'd be able to gain the dinars from her victory. I don't want the renown. Or, well, I actually do want the renown, but the dinars would actually be quite cool. But it, it is a personal tournament after all, so it is perfectly fine for her to... Uh, keep her winnings, so to speak. But yeah, I thought that was actually pretty good. We did all right. And uh, I now have 3,800 dinars, which is actually not bad. And a lot of my people leveled up from the quest that we completed. Otherwise, that's going to be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.